Okay. Let's go ahead and continue on our discussion. This is where we stop with the hedonistic uh, types of serial murderers. So we're still in hedonistic, uh, but remember we're talking about um, the lust or thrill type of killers. Uh, and now we get to move on to the, the second subcategory of hedonistic. So uh, this is going to be your comfort oriented. It's a little bit different. Oh, you know, we see it's a different subcategory, but um, most people uh, may not really think about this as being a, a typical, you know, serial killer type of mentality. Uh, this is more so uh, basically people committing murder for, as it says, are comfort oriented. So it could be financial gain. Uh, that's usually the, the number one reason. There's no sexual gratification with it. Um, unlike, remember, with the lust or thrill uh, killer, they literally have an erotic uh, reaction or, in essence, get sexually aroused and some sexual gratification from killing someone. And something I, I did, um, I think I touched on, but I don't think I went into it quite the explanation I needed to with uh, Andrea Chikatilo with his, you know, from what he statements he had made about his different experiences. Basically I said that, you know, he hadn't had much um, luck, if you want to call it that, uh, as far as being able to have intimacy with females. He had tried. Um, I believe the first time he tried to be intimate was when he was, uh, 16 years old. Um, and then again, at 18, he tried, uh, with no luck, meaning uh, apparently he couldn't, uh, keep the arousal. Uh, so they had some issues there, but then when he, there was a girl and I mentioned he attacked a younger girl later on, he did do that. Uh, and then he also, what he found out was he got aroused by, uh, for one, the struggle of it, he started to get aroused by that. Um, and then the other part is, uh, to, like the next step was he got even more aroused whenever he eventually uh, had a knife and stabbed uh, his victim. Uh, so, yeah, you'll have that. And in fact, this isn't Ch uh, Chikatilo, but there are reports of other, uh, going back to, like I said, to the lost and thrill hedonistic type that will uh, actually get so excited and so aroused by actually killing somebody that in the process of it, they cannot, they can't penetrate the, the victim. Uh, but sometimes they will, uh, in the whole process of it or shortly after killing someone, they will uh, ejaculate. Um, and then this is also another issue to where they can also uh, another reason why some of them participate in necrophilia. So uh, I just thought I'd throw that in there. I know it's not comfort oriented and that's more so the lust, thrill to, uh, lust or thrill type. Um, but I did want to point that out. So now we can move on to the comfort oriented, uh, go back to them. They kill for personal gain. So these are three of my top examples. The ones that came to mind, uh, the quickest, the one, the name that sticks out probably the most for you two, uh, all of you, uh, would be to uh, Eileen Warnios. Uh, and some of you who are doing a report on Eileen may have already found this. Hopefully, you, all of you have started reports, by the way. Uh, your, not reports, but you're getting information for your presentation. So, uh, but a lot of people don't realize that. Eileen, even though she complained about, oh, she, you know, she was a victim of abuse growing up, which she may very well have. I, uh, there haven't been reports that, that say anything that they're not to the point where she tried to say it was, but there were reports that uh, there had been some abuse, like physical abuse that had occurred. So either way, uh, people don't realize, some of them, that she actually killed for financial purposes. The original reason that she and her uh, a lesbian partner decided to uh, start 
you know, even try and do any type of crime outside of the prostitution they were, uh, she was already doing was simply for financial gain. She basically had the idea of getting, since she was a parking lot lizard or in essence a prostitute that works for, uh, works in some of these different truck stops, whatever, um, what she would do would be, and once she got alone with a guy, uh, the plan was basically pull a gun uh, and rob them and then leave. Okay. That was the, the gist of it originally. However, <clears throat> it got to a point where uh, she basically decided, you know, she had a gun. She ended up shooting one guy after he gave, uh, you know, after she got some money and, and valuable things out of it. Uh, then ultimately that became the MO is basically shooting uh, the men. So, um, so that was the reason for hers for financial gain. Uh, so it started off with robbery and turned into what ended up being serial murder also. So, um, and then John Robinson, he basically uh, would go in, I say go in, but he uh, would have these individuals that he would uh, help create <clears throat> different policies for, or he would help care for them. Um, but nonetheless, he would get their information, especially if he knew that they were getting some type of social security check or some aid from the government, typically older people, but not always. But eventually what he would do is after he either got things in his name or usually what he would do is just keep it in that particular individual's name uh, for social security purposes, for example, he would... Um, be around that person, he would eventually kill them, get rid of their body. Uh, he tried to put them in big, you know, these barrels, um, and the barrels were eventually found, like in this shed. Uh, but nonetheless, he tried to hide the bodies and continue to receive their checks um, that were being sent to. And because he would be either, you know, power of attorney uh, for those individuals or there are other ways to, to get the money. <clears throat> he would, that's all he was killing people for was essentially money or some type of financial gain. Um, and then Richard Kuklinski was a hitman, uh, but he, uh, he would you know, basically kill people for financial gain as a hitman, but he had absolutely no remorse, no, um, and didn't even think about it, honestly. And then later on, he, uh, he didn't do it initially, but later he decided to, in essence, partner up with another guy who would help with dismemberment of the bodies. Because um, there for a while, it wasn't a big deal for Kuklinski to basically just kill someone and leave them where they were and just not have any evidence because he uh, would make the, uh, make the uh, kill fairly quick and just be done with it. Um, you know, and just walk off. There'd be no connection between him and that particular victim. Uh, but then later on, like I said, he decided to incorporate the help of another individual and they started dismembering bodies. Uh, and he eventually got caught. But he did say one time he, he almost let, he, well, I'll take this back. He said he let someone go because uh, he didn't really th know or think that they are, you know, know of a reason why they should uh, be killed. However, he said, after I decided to let them go, because I was also somewhat friends with them or knew them, he said, I also knew that they would uh, be able to identify me. So after I told them I would let them go and they turned around, I, I shot them in the head. So, um, so yeah, anyway, that's Richard Kuklinski. That's a comfort oriented, hedonistic, comfort oriented type of uh, murderer. Okay. And so that's really the, the gist of uh, the hedonistic types. Comfort oriented is pretty simple. It's just for financial gain. That's all it is. Uh, now, the next one and the last one that we're going to talk about when it comes to homicide is power control. This is, I would say, if you're coming up with the top two types that you're going to see the uh, majority of the time, um, or at least are the ones that are uh, put out there, more often, I already told you earlier, the lust, the real kill of the hedonistic type uh, is one of them. And this power control uh, group is the other one. So sexual gratification or total domination over someone. So 
there we go. Uh, as I, you know, you can read their sexual gratification. Uh, this is unlike hedonistic killer who gets aroused and sexual gratification from killing. You know, like, oh, I killed someone in the process of killing. The power control individual, they get sexual gratification from purely dominating somebody. I mean, they don't, you know, because here's the thing. Think about this way for power control. And it's really simple in terms of power or control over someone. If someone is, if a, a, a person is dead, you don't really, you know, can you really have, control over that person anymore can you really exert control over them and can you um you know are you really being that dominant over a a dead body the answer is no now do they still do degrading things to the body you know in terms of because sometimes they see it as control um, and humiliation for the family yeah you can still do that but for the most part the fun for them is over with once the the person is, is dead and they view that as, you know, that particular person as an object, um, and as a, a way to reach that, you know, they, the person is the means to the end of, well, I want to experience this complete domination over somebody else. Um, you know, whether it be through torture, whether it be through, uh, you know, taking, from an inch of their life and then bringing them back because now I have the power. I'm telling you, I have the power to um, kill you or allow you to live. Um, but once that death occurs, then there's no more arousal and no more excitement for the power and control type. So uh, just keep that in mind. That's the easiest way to think about the difference between this and the hedonistic lust and thrill. Okay. Um, also, they tend to be sociopathic. That's not surprising since uh, sociopaths and psychopaths, but say sociopaths don't uh, form real, it's harder for them to form real good relationships with people. So therefore, they can view people as almost like objects or, uh, you know, the, the means to an end, essentially. Okay. No other mental illness, like we said before, obviously there's something a little different about the, these particular people, but no major mental illness uh, with power control. Um, definitely process focused. And okay. You know how earlier I was talking about the, uh, the hedonistic lust and thrill killers. They are, you know, they would prefer to, to, uh, say use a knife or something like that. That is, um, it still allows them to have some, you know, a more intimate, uh, and erotic, uh, aspect of actually killing somebody. Okay. Well, power and control, they love to use their hands. So, you know, because what, what is more personal or more dominating and more, um, in essence, powerful than being able to, with your own hands, control someone else. So whether they are keeping them alive uh, and, you know, beating them uh, senseless, whether they are torturing them, uh, whether they are actually killing them and strangulating them uh, or strangling them, I should say, through str you know, strangulation is there, as you can read there, is ideal for them because it's hands-on. Um, now, granted, some may use a ligature which basically means a rope or something like that cord. Um, but a lot of times they much prefer to have something hands on the more actual physical touching and involvement there is, the better it is for a power and control type of serial murderer. Uh, because that's like I said before, there's no greater way of showing dominance over someone than to have to be able to do it with your own hands. Shooting somebody doesn't really excite them. That's, I mean, you can do that from, you know, hundreds, uh, even farther than that. Let's say 100 feet away. Yeah, you can do that. Um, uh, the next step closer, you know, might be hitting someone with a, a bat or using a knife or something like that. Yeah, it's in your hand, 
and it's an extension of your body or your hand, uh, but it's not you personally doing something to dominate somebody else. So that's what we're going after with the power control types. Um, so I think that should be pretty self-explanatory, but they definitely love the process of dominating someone. Um, so I think that covers it pretty clearly, but if any of you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else that stands out right off the top of my head about uh, power and control that you need to know. I mean, other than the, like I said, other than the stuff that to me seems to be pretty straightforward. I mean, they, they are not so much excited about killing someone like the lust and thrill killer or the hedonistic type. They are, once again, they just love the idea of being able to um, control someone and demonstrate the power they have over someone else. So, um, if they can keep their victims alive longer, that's better for them because they can demonstrate even more um, power dominance over someone else. These are the type that you may find uh, that keep, in essence, keep people prisoner somewhere if they have them or keep them captive, um, <clears throat> whether that be through, you know, handcuffing them somewhere in their own residence, whether it be, um, you know, putting down in a basement somewhere. Um, okay, so example, um, one example would be Gary Heidnick. Um, you know, he he had those, uh, if, I don't know if you want to call them prisoners, slaves, or whatever, but he had victims that he had down in his basement that he had chained up. Uh, some of them were chained to pipe, some of them. Either way, they were all chained up, uh, and he would... You know, basically beat them and rape them almost every day. Um, and you, know, you, you guys probably remember this from a video we watched early in the semester. But at one point in time, you know, he also got to where he would like to uh, torture them using uh, electricity. And he unintentionally uh, electrocuted one of them. So to get rid of the evidence, he basically dismembered the, uh, the girl, mixed her dismembered body parts uh, with dog food in a blender, uh, blended that up, and then uh, made the other women eat that for food. So uh, that's just an example there of another power and control type of mentality. Um, but yeah, that's that's the big thing. They, they just want to demonstrate the power. So hopefully you can understand the difference between that and the hedonistic type. So... Um, if you have any questions along those lines, please, please, please let me know through, you, you know, I've already told you this multiple times, but through email, um, through the virtual office hour, you can call me, um, whatever you need to do, we can, I can help answer those questions. If you have questions out of curiosity about this stuff, obviously, but then also if you have general questions about um, like, well, where does this really fall on the lines? I won't give you every answer you need for your presentation, but if you give me details on things or have questions about it, how do you distinguish from one from the other or, you know, one type from another type or whatever the case is, um, I can work with you on, on that. Um, so that's all I want to tell you. Just be aware that I can, I am willing to help you and willing to alert, work with you. But, um, but you got to get a hold of me if, if that's what you want. So that's the end of the homicide uh, information here before too long. I will also um, have lessons on uh, covering serial rapists. Uh, and then I'm waiting to know what you all decide uh, as far as what your other chapter or subject matter you'd like to cover would be. So um, also we're going to talk about child, uh, like the difference between child molester and child uh, like a pedophile and child molester, there are differences. So either way, that's what I wanted to get through today. And I will be talking with you soon. But if you have any questions, please remember to, to get a hold of me. Have a good day.